All right, welcome to a video where we're going to talk about scientific notation and how we can use that to not write such large numbers. Go ahead and take a look at the screen here where we have the two red numbers. Both of them are obnoxiously large and obnoxiously small. And it would be such a terrible thing to have to write those numbers all the time. So what we're gonna do is learn a method where we can take these long numbers and make them into short numbers. Now, to make very large or very small numbers into a more manageable uh, number, we're going to use a method called scientific notation. And essentially what that does is it uses powers of 10 to help make these large and small numbers into smaller numbers that are easier to manage. Now, um, here is an example of how we can convert a number into scientific notation. Notice how the point zero zero one six one is the same number as the 1.61 times 10 to the negative 3. Those two numbers are the same number. They're just written differently. One's using standard notation and the other is scientific notation. Now notice this next one. This next one is really obnoxious. Can you imagine having to write point zero 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 one nine seven all the time? That would be that would be uncomfortable. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, again, use that shorter hand to write it. And, and again, those two numbers are the same. And then one more example here, that is a really big number. And so we can take those really big numbers, make them into a more smaller manageable number. And so that's what we're going to learn how to do. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do that with this specific number. It's going to be 310,000. So we're going to take 310,000 and convert that to scientific notation. And so the first step is to move the decimal point to where there's one number to the left of the decimal. So we want it to where there's only one number to the left. And so it's going to be one non-zero to the left. Now when you're looking at this number here, uh, there's no decimal point, except there is a decimal point, it's just not written in there. So the decimal point in this number happens to be at the very end of the number. And so we can use that and move it to where there's one non-zero to the left. And so here we go. And there it goes. Oh, so we're moving it to where there's one non-zero to the left. Now think about it if we had a number where it was like 0 0.00031, we would then move it to the right to where until there's one non-zero to the left of it. Now, the next step is what we want to do is use the number that's, that it results from that, and we're going to use that as the coefficient. And so the coefficient is going to be the part that's in front of the times 10. Now, the, if you take a look here, the coefficient in this situation is going to be 3.1. Then what you're going to do is you're going to count the number of times that the decimal point moved and the number of times that it moved will end up being the exponent of the 10. And so let's go ahead and count the number of times that this decimal point moved. So here it is again. It's going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It moved over 5 times so that means the exponent of the 10 is going to be 5. And so if you have a large number, you're going to end up having a positive exponent. However, if you have a small number, like 0.000195, it's going to end up being a negative. In other words, if you have to move the decimal to the left, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to have a positive exponent. But if you're moving the decimal to the right, you're going to have a negative exponent. But the way I think about it is if you have a big number, like 6 billion, it's going to be a positive exponent. But if you have a very small number, like 0.000028, it's going to be a negative exponent. Now your final quantity should be expressed as the coefficient multiplied by 10 to the power of how many times you moved it over. And so in this situation, you'll see that it's going to end up being 3.1, which was our coefficient, multiplied by 10 to the 5 because we moved the decimal 5 times over. Now, you always, always, always want to put your, your scientific notation in parentheses when you are doing calculations. So we're going to be using scientific notation for the whole year 
And anytime you're going to do any sort of calculation, when you type it into your calculator, you put it in parentheses. If you put it in parentheses, you will uh, be successful later on. Now, one method of writing scientific notation is replacing the times 10 to the whatever with E. And the E represents times 10. And to give you an example of that, and just to let you know, this is how you will see it in your calculator. Your calculator will give you an answer like that with the E. Um, to give you an example, here's the uh, example of how you'll see that. If you, if you take a look, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, if you type that in your calculator, will end up being 6.02E23. So let's go ahead and take a look at the calculator here and see how the calculator will show you scientific notation. We can go ahead and type in 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now notice how this is standard scientific or just scientific notation, but when we hit enter, notice how the calculator gives it to us. We we get 6.02 e 23. And again, the E means times 10. So make sure that you don't forget to look at the end to see the E because that is a common mistake that people make. And that's all we have for this video. Uh, go ahead and check out the guided practice problems to see more practice problems with this.